Praise the Lord. Are you there? I said, Praise the Lord. Rise up as we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you very much for this day. Thank you for the service. Thank you for the privilege of coming to worship you. We pray, Lord, today I worship we are accepted in your sight in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we pray that the spirit of worship will be upon everyone. And the word you speak to us, O Lord, from the very heart and from your mind, it will come to our heart, come to our mind, come to our spirit, and turn us around in the right direction in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, everyone worshiping here today, the invitees and the members of the church, your power will descend upon every life, and you make us to be obedient to the word in Jesus' name. Grant us, Lord, attentive ears, attentive hearts. We'll concentrate on your word. We'll not allow anything from any direction to sway us up from your word in Jesus' name. Bless your people in the word, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. And you know, everywhere I go, I tell the people, I need a warm amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I just came back from some programs. You know, we finished uh, crusade last week on Sunday. And then we had a Monday Bible study. And after the Monday Bible study, then I had to travel out. And we had a great meeting. And I told them I'm coming from Nigeria where the hallelujah and the amen will chase away the devil. <laughs> and so I told them, you know, when you come back to Lagos, the headquarters, you need to remain warm. So I said, they must not allow me to be cold while I'm with them. And so they, if they want me to keep warm while I come back to Lagos here, they give me good hallelujah and good amen and good praise the Lord. And I'm telling you that what I saw here in Nigeria, I saw over there, great, great miracles that took place. Everybody say praise the Lord. You know, the, the power of the word of God is the same everywhere. And that's the power of the word I bring to you today. And you know, it was, I think it was on Thursday, we started the program on Tuesday night. And there was somebody that came in, had a complex problem, so on a wheelchair. And in the morning, well, you know, we had finished our morning session. And then they brought this woman wheeled high in the wheelchair. And they said, Pastor, this person is prayer, complications in our life. Diabetes, paralysis, this one and that one. We almost could not name them. So I said, All right, I'm coming from Nigeria, the house of power. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then I laid my hands on her. I said, In the name of Jesus, you are healed and you are well. You know, you don't belong to the wheelchair. Get up and walk. You know, and she sat down there, and then they wheeled her away. But I knew that, you know, the work had been done already. And then as they got her away, then she said, the Spirit of God said within her, you are right, get up and walk. And she got up and started walking. And I've discovered, I've discovered it doesn't matter where you are, whether you are in Africa or you are in Europe or anywhere, the power of God is the same. Because it is the power of the word of God. And this morning I bring the word of God to you, the power of God's word in believers. The power of God's word in believers. It's a great privilege to become a child of God, a believer that he is to be converted from number one, from an unbeliever to a believer. Number two, to be converted from a sinner to a saint. Number three, to be converted from a child of Satan to a child of God. What a wonder to be converted from darkness unto light. Number five, to be converted from following the world and now following the Lord. 
And when you are converted like that, there is a change in your life. A mighty change in your life. And that mighty change gives you some privileges in your Christian life. Look at this as a child of God. We have already a love that cannot be fathomed. That is so deep. That is so high. That is so broad. That is so great. A love that cannot be fathomed. Number two. A life that cannot die. That cannot cease. We have life eternal. We have eternal life. Everlasting life in Christ. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. We have a life that cannot cease. That cannot die. Number three. We have a righteousness. That cannot be tarnished. You see when we became Christians. It says Christ became the sin offering. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Number four. We have a peace that cannot be understood. That is a peace that passes understanding the turmoil in your heart is taken away the confusion in your mind is taken away and the commotion and the storm within you is taken away and you have a peace that cannot be understood number five you have a rest that cannot be disturbed you have rest in your soul it says come unto me and rest Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and you shall find rest for your soul. A rest that cannot be disturbed. Number six, a joy that cannot be diminished. Unspeakable joy. Overflowing joy. Because you become a child of God. Number seven, you have a hope that cannot be disappointed. We hope in the Lord. Actually, when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you were hopeless before, it brings you to the hope that cannot be disappointed. Number eight, we have a light that cannot be interrupted by darkness. It says, I am the light of the world. He that walketh in me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Number nine, we have a strength that cannot be enfeebled. Because the Lord is my strength, and the Lord is my salvation. And because the Lord is your salvation, then the Lord becomes your strength. And because he is never feeble, he's never tired, he's never weak, so we have this strength that cannot be feeble. Number, number 10, we have a purity that cannot be defiled. He gives us his righteousness. He gives us his purity. And the purity he gives unto us cannot be defiled. Number 11, a wisdom that cannot be baffled. He gives us wisdom. And when he gives us that wisdom, in that wisdom we can go through life and we'll be successful. Number 12, we have resources that cannot be exhausted. Resources that cannot be exhausted. And we enjoy these privileges in increasing measures. When we discover more of God's word and we follow the Lord. That's why I'm talking to you today on the power of God's word in believers. Look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart it tells us that the word of god and you hold the book in your hand that and that book is the totality of the word of god to you the totality of the word of god to man and it contains everything you will need to make you successful, to make you happy here in this life and in the world to come. For the word of God is quick, that means it's alive, and it's powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. That means this word of God then is so mighty. And it's so powerful. It's sharper than any instrument of weapon of any man here on earth. And it says it pierces even to the dividing asunder. 
to the separation of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrows and it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart that's why when you come to the word of god it reveals to you what's in your heart and reveals to you if those things are bad how you can be cleansed away from them how you can be free from them and then it reveals to you how the power of the Almighty God can so fill your heart and you become a totally different person. The Word of God found you a sinner. And then you allow that Word of God to convict you. And then you get on your knees and you pray according to the revelation of the Word of God. And it brings conversion into your life. And with that conversion, you become a new creature in Christ. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, how many things have become new? All things have become new. And it is a ministry of the message of the miracle that you have in the word of God. It tells us in Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Romans chapter 1. Verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It says, I am not ashamed, and it's nothing to be ashamed of in the word of God. Why are we not ashamed of the word of God? Why are we not ashamed of the gospel? Because the gospel is the power of God. The power of Christ. Now when I say the gospel, you need to understand the gospel is good news. And I bring good news to you. I said I bring good news to you. The gospel is good news. What's, what's it about? It's the word of God. And spell that word for me now. G-O-S-P-E-L. Gospel. Grace. is the word of grace. You see, it is the gospel that tells us the word of the grace of God. And the grace of God that transforms your life. The grace of God that makes you to be saved. And the grace of God that you'll find sufficient in all the situations in your life. The grace of God that gets you sanctified and pure and holy. The grace of God that showers upon you or merited on deserved blessings of the word of God. I am not ashamed of the gospel, of the word of grace. Oh, there is omnipotence. It's the word of omnipotence. It's the word of the God that... That cannot fail the word of our God that cannot when he says something he has omnipotent power to carry it out as is the word of salvation in the gospel you have the word of salvation is the word of grace is the word of omnipotence and it's the word of salvation full salvation salvation for your soul salvation for your spirit and salvation for your body. Total redemption, total salvation. And peace, there is a word of power. The word of Christ is the word of power. The word of God is the word of power. He said it and it was established. He said it and it was done. And any time the word of God came out, it's always doing something. And the word of God is coming to you today. You'll find it in your family, in your life. It will be the word of power to you in Jesus' name. It's the word of the eternal. The word of the eternal. You see, God is the eternal one. And Jesus is Emmanuel. And the eternal one and Emmanuel, they will be forever and ever. They have been before the foundation of the world. And they are still continuing now. And they will continue to exist even after the world has been burnt up. It's the word of the eternal. And that means the word of the finite cannot cancel the word of the infinite. The word of men on earth cannot cancel the word of the God who is eternal. That's why he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Because that gospel of Christ, the word of grace, the word of omnipotence, and the word of salvation, 
and the word of power and the word of the eternal it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believes to the jew first and also to the greek and then l is the word of love god's love for man for sinful man God's love for man, for the sick man. God's love for man, for the, for the man in captivity. God's love for everyone is the word of his love. And when you come to the gospel, you are coming to the love of God. And he says, I'm not ashamed of that word, of that gospel, the gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes everyone, not just everyone on the street. The moment you come to believe it, it becomes the power of God for you, whether you are Greek or whether you are Jew. In Hebrews chapter 1, I'm reading to you from verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. It tells us then that this word we're reading is the word of his power. And that's why I'm talking to you today on the power of God's word in believers. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the powerful ministry of God's word. The powerful ministry of God's word. Number two, profitable meditation on God's word. Profitable meditation on God's word. And then number three, Precious and preventive medicine. Precious and preventive medicine in God's word. You see, this word actually is medicine to your soul, to your spirit, and to your body. And then it gives you cure and total relief and total release. Everything in the word of God. Let's come back to number one. The powerful ministry of God's word. Uh, you know as well as I do that a lot of people just came to know the Lord as their personal Savior. And as you come to know the Lord as your personal Savior, if there is any one gift we can give you, after the gift of salvation that God has given you, it is the gift of the Word of God, the gift of the Bible. And as you read that Bible every day, it will make you strong as a new convert, as a new believer, and you're Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If there is anything well to emphasize to you, is to emphasize the word of God. You wake up in the morning, you read that word. And then before you sleep at night, you read that word. And for those of us who have been believers, after all, the water you drank, the day you were born into this world, you are still drinking the water now, even though you have become older in age. The same thing, the water of the word of God. That you drank. At the moment you were born again, many years ago, that water of the world, you still need to be drinking today, and it ought to be cleansing you day by day, day after day, as we're encouraging the newcomers, the people that have just come to know the Lord, as we're encouraging them that they ought to put their faith in the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Search the Word of God the same. We're telling those who have been long in the Lord that to still hold on to the Word of God, the Bible. Let's look at it in the powerful ministry of God's Word in First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. I'm reading to you from verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside... All malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world that she may grow thereby. As newborn babes, as a new convert in Christ, 
as somebody who has just received the grace of God into your life, as somebody who has received the forgiveness of your sin, and you have received the release from the hand of the devil and the captivity of the devil, and you have come to know the Lord as your personal Savior, as newborn babes, as a person just born into the family of God, that the Spirit of God is bearing witness with your heart now, I am a child of God. There is joy in my heart. I have life eternal. I have the very life of Christ within me. I am born again. It just happened. Just a few weeks ago, as we're giving that testimony as newborn babes, then you desire the sincere milk of the world that she may grow thereby. Verse 3, if so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If so be that you have tasted that the grace of God is available, and that grace of God has entered into you, and has done something within you, and you can now say, I am not what I used to be. Ah, if you are going to be able to say, I'm not what I used to be, look at verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside, laying aside, What's that telling you? It's telling you that the Christian life is a journey. And you're taking a journey. The Christian life is a race. And you're running in a race. The Christian life is a forward movement. You're moving from where you are to where you ought to be. And if you're not going to allow your journey to be disturbed, to be hindered, to be limited, to be impeded, if you're not going to allow your journey to stop by the wayside, there are some loads you cannot carry with you. There are some baggages you cannot have with you. And there are some hindrances you have to lay aside. What are they? One, all malice. You see, when you become a Christian, if the word of God is going to be a fruit in your life, you lay aside all malice. Basically, all unbelievers, all sinners, they keep malice either with A or with B. Either with their father or with their mother. Either with their brothers or their sisters. Either with their co-tenants or their co-workers. They keep malice either with some friends or with enemies. Every sinner. But now you come to know the Lord as your personal Savior. And it says there must be a change of heart. A change of life, a change of direction, a change of behavior. And you lay aside how many forms of malice? All, All malice. Then if you have not laid that aside, you have not really started the journey you think you have started. And if you have been a Christian, you laid it aside many years ago, but now you picked it up again. And you are keeping malice with a teacher. You are keeping malice with a student. You are keeping malice with a friend. You are keeping malice with a co-tenant. Well, you are keeping malice with a co-worker. You are then no more living the Christ life that you ought to live. Lay aside all malice and all guile. All forms of deception. All forms of lying. All forms of hypocrisy, all God, lay aside, all God. And you know, there are some people, and it's easy these days for people to tell, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. And then you deal with them in business, and they're deceptive. Or you deal with them, you, you, maybe you want to buy something, and then they deceive you. Or maybe you say you want to rent a house and you give them the money and they deceive you. Or they say they know something, you are trying to do a business and you say, I want to say, oh, I know where I can buy that thing for you at a very cheap price. And they deceive you. But if you're a real Christian, it says you lay aside all girl and uh, hypocrisies. Hypocrisies in the plural. Why is it in the plural? Oh, because there's a form of hypocrisy that you'll find with Pharaoh. Pray for me. After you pray for me, I will let you go. And it's all hypocrisy. It's Egyptian hypocrisy. There's a kind of hypocrisy you find with Saul. 
And Saul will say, oh, David, my son, is that your voice I'm hearing? I will not hurt you. Come back home. And it's all hypocrisy. And it's a kind of it's a kind of hypocrisy of Saul. It's the kind of hypocrisy you find in the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they have their own form of hypocrisy. Master, we know that you tell the truth. Tell us, shall we pay tribute to Caesar or not? And it's all hypocrisy. They're asking their questions, and it's a question of hypocrisy. And the Lord is saying, if you are starting the journey you are going on, in the journey that leads to heaven, you will lay aside all forms of Guile, all forms of malice and all forms of hypocrisies, religious hypocrisy. Lay it aside. Sinful hypocrisy, lay it aside. And the hypocrisy that women normally have towards their husband, lay it aside. The kind of hypocrisy husbands manifest and the husbands look very faithful and normal and all right when the wife is there. But when the wife is not there, they do another thing. Lay it aside and be who you ought to be, a new creature in Christ. And all envy, jealousy, envy is got it why shouldn't i have it lay it aside and all evil speaking biting people behind them smiling when you are in front of them and showing much love when you are in front of them but when you are behind them then you gossip against them and you slash them down and you cut them down and you hit them in your speech and you talk in a derogatory manner behind them. Lay it aside. It doesn't belong to the Christian life. When you lay that aside, then it says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word of God, that she may grow thereby. If so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. It tells us the ministry of the word. And now the ministry of the word, it means that when you have that word of God, you are going to grow. You are going to increase. You are going to develop. And you are going to move on. You are going to be more than you are today because of that word of God ministering to your life. In Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Reading from verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired a day than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and the honeycomb moreover by them is thy servant one, and in the keeping of them there is great reward. Well, eh, that's the word of God is talking about there. He calls it the law of the Lord. That's still the word of God. Because the testimony of the Lord is still the word of God. Because the statutes of the Lord in verse 8 is still the word of God. Because the commandment of the Lord in verse 8 and it is still the word of God. Because the fear of the Lord is still the word of God. Because the judgments of the Lord is still the word of God. And what does it say the word of God does? As to take this word of God and you read it and you accept it. And you believe it. And you walk in it. And you live by its commandments. What does it do in your life? What is the ministry of that word in your life? Look at verse 7. The law. The Lord is perfect converting the soul. It actually turns your life around. And the word of God makes you a better person. The word of God makes you a better person. It doesn't make you a bitter person. You know, I'm surprised there are some people that, you know, they, they, they never miss Bible study. And they never miss Sunday devotional worship. And they never miss our Thursday miracle revival hour. But I find they are bitter, bitter people. 
beat up people. If they close their mouth and they sit down, they look like they're good, good people. But the moment they open their mouth, they're bitter against everybody. They're bitter against the church. They're bitter against their wife. They're bitter against their husband. They're bitter against their children. They're bitter against every member in the church. Bitter. And they keep on coming to the Bible study every time. And yet, the word of God does not make them better. It makes them bitter. But you see the word of God, when you actually read it, when you hear it, when you accept it, the word of God is the law of the Lord. It converts the soul and it will convert you from being bitter to being better. And the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. That's the ministry of the word of God. You know, it beats my imagination. That means it surprises me. When you find somebody who has been coming to hear the word of God for two years, for three years, and then wants to take a decision on how to get married, on who to get married to. And then the fellow makes a very foolish decision that hurts him for the rest of his life. And yet the word of God, when you hear the word of God, and you have the right attitude to the word of God, this word of God will make the simple, the foolish, it will make him wise. Or you find somebody that wants to take a decision, he wants to change uh, location, accommodation. He wants to leave this place and go to, an, he wants to go to another place. And the decision he takes as to where to go and leave, he takes a decision that hurts him. That destroys him That takes him away from hearing the word of God Takes him away from the fellowship of the people of God Then you ask yourself How can this fellow be coming to the Bible study for the whole uh, For five years And yet cannot take a decision that is wise in his life The word of God When you hear it When you accept it And you walk by it The decisions you take The life you live Will turn you from foolishness to being wise. It tells us in verse 8 the statutes of the Lord are right rejoice in the heart rejoice in the heart you know you, sometimes you find a believer you say uh, brother any problem why are you so sad and every time we see you it's like if somebody saw you even if no joy will ever parade there's no joy of the Lord and the joy of the Lord is your strength and when you hear the word of God you hear the promise of God you see the prophecies of the word of God you see the precepts in the word of God you see the protection in the word of God you see the possibilities in the word of God you see the prayers you can pray by the word of God it rejoices your heart you say what sorrow again and what pressure again When you have the word of God It rejoices the heart It ministers joy unto you And faith unto you And hope unto you It tells us the commandments of the Lord Is pure Enlightening the eyes Ah, I didn't see that before I didn't know that before Now I know that it enlightens you The fear of the Lord is clean and enduring forever The judgment of the Lord Are true and righteous all children Together, more to be desired a day than go ye than fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them, thy servant is warned. We're warned by the word of God. And once it tells us there's danger there, who say the word of God tells me there's danger there, I cannot go there. Once the Lord says there's no road there, the word of God is telling me there's no road, there's no way there. A child of God should not walk in that path. Then I'm one. The servant of the Lord is one. In the keeping of them, there is great reward. This is the ministry of the word in James chapter 1 verse 18. James chapter 1. Reading from verse 18. Of his own will... Begat ye us by the word of truth. That's how we are born again. You cannot be born again without hearing the word that begat us. The word that makes us to be taken out of the world and we come to the Lord. Of his own will, he begat us by the word 
of truth. It is this word of truth, the truth that tells you you're a sinner. The word of truth. The truth that tells you you cannot save yourself. The word of truth. And the word that tells you that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary so you can be saved. The word of truth. The word that tells you whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of truth. The word of truth that says now is the day, is the time of salvation, and now is the accepted time. And then you come to the Lord, and you find it to be true, and you are born again. Of his own will, he begat us by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of false fruits of his creature. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be sweet to hear, slow to speak. And slow to wrath, for the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. Look at verse 21. Wherefore, what are the next two words? Lay apart. You see that? We read that in First Peter before. When you come to know the Lord, there are things that will no more be part of your life. Lay apart. All filthiness. All filthiness for those of you who have just become born again. You need to understand Bible language. In Bible language, what you call girlfriend, boyfriend, that's filthiness. In Bible language, what you call masturbation, that's filthiness. In Bible language, what you call homosexuals, that's filthiness. All unclean language. All unclean behavior. All unclean interaction. All obscene picture, pornography, either from the television or from the internet or from magazine, is filthiness. And it says, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Naughtiness. You know, you understand the word naughtiness? When our teachers at school, when they tell us, Children, young people, don't walk this way. Don't do this. Don't make a noise. Sit down quietly. I need to teach you the word of God. And then there's one of them, a boy, and becomes rebellious, disobedient, and will walk contrary to what the teacher is saying. Then the teacher will say, my boy, why are you so naughty? Why are you so rebellious? Why are you so disobedient? Naughtiness, that's disobedience. That's rebellion. And he says, we lay apart, we who are adults. Now you say you have come to know the Lord as your personal Savior. If there is anything that shows that you are a believer, you are a child of God, and you have been born again by this word of truth, you lay apart all superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the grafted word which is able to save your soul. In a church where we understand the word of God, we appreciate obedience to the word of God. We appreciate submission to the word of God because it's the evidence of our salvation. It's the evidence of being born again. It's the evidence and the mark that now we belong to the Lord because the grace of God has come to us and we're able to obey the word of God. Actually, in, the, in a church where we have born again people, and thank God we are here. I say, thank God we are here. Yeah. If you are born again, can I see your hand up? God bless you. You know, among the people that are born again, if anybody is not here at all, he'll be in the minority. In a minority. And you know, you come back to my class now. Let's say I'm a teacher, and I'm teaching young people in the class. And all the students are enjoying the class. And they want to give me the maximum time to teach them. Because they know this teacher is a good teacher. is preparing everyone of us to have distinction in this subject. If there is one isolated child that is rebellious, that is disobedient, that is noisy, that wants to disturb the whole class, the rest of the class will shout him down. 
The rest of the class will not shout him up. They will not encourage him. They will not build him up. He will not be a hero if he's naughty. If he's disturbing the peace of the whole class. If they know that this child is not giving us the chance for our teacher to give the very best to us, the rest of the children will not make that fellow, that disobedient fellow, that rebellious fellow, that naughty student will not make him a hero. That's why I say in the church that nobody in the church should be regarded as a hero for naughtiness, for being disobedient, for being rebellious. The rest of the church shall show our disapproval for those who are naughty, for those who are rebellious, and for those who are not carrying out the word of God. We should be able, as a good church, as good members in a good church, believing the word of God, shout them down. And tell them you cannot do that. This is a church standing on the word of God. But when somebody who is naughty, rebellious, disobedient, becomes a hero in the church. And everybody is saying, hey, you are doing great. You are doing well. You are disturbing the church. And you are disobeying the commandments of the Lord. And you are naughty. And they are shouting him up. Keep on doing it. We make a sinner hero. We make backsliders heroes. But when we understand what the word of God is saying. Then those people that are naughty. And they have not laid aside. The superfluity of naughtiness. They'll feel ashamed because nobody is encouraging them. Nobody is lifting them up. And nobody is shouting them up. And nobody is publicizing them. We we'll just look away from them, overlook them. They feel belittled and small and degraded. Then they will stop. They will repent and turn to the Lord. This church will be a church of obedient people in Jesus' name. And receive with meekness the ingrated word which is able to save your soul. In verse 22, but be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. It tells us then there that we need to have the word of God. And the word of God will minister greatly into our lives. We're looking at Psalm 119. Psalm 119, we're looking at verse 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the, unto the simple. The entrance of your word. When we actually receive the word of God, it grants us light. Grants us light. And we live by that word. In Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16 in Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16 thy words were found and I did eat them thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart for I am called by thy name O Lord God of hosts the word of God actually brings joy to our hearts it brings rejoicing to us when we see the love of God in His Word. We see the grace of God in His Word. We see the mercy of God in His Word. We see the power of God able to change every negative thing away from our lives. It brings us joy. I found your Word. I ate your Word. I digested your word. I assimilated, I swallowed your word. And your word was unto me joy and the rejoicing of my heart. In Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, reading from verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom. That means that the ministry of the word of God 
It's like this. And it's going to give us joy. It's going to give us faith. It's going to give us hope. And it's going to give us strength. It's going to give us enlightenment. It's going to give us power. It's going to give us every good thing that we need. If the word of God is like that, then let that word dwell in your heart richly. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace. Singing with grace. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. So, if we are going to take the word of God aright, how do we respond to the word of God? Meditate on the word. That leads me to point number two. Profitable meditation on God's word. Profitable meditation on God's word. You see, it is because we meditate on the word, that's why we get the profit out of the word. And if we're hearing the word of God, and we're not meditating on the word, we're not going to get the profit we ought to get out of the word of God. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. I'm sure you know that God was talking to Joshua. And Joshua had a peculiar privilege as well as a peculiar problem. It was to challenge the Amalekites. And God said, if you're going to overcome the Amalekites, this word will not depart out of your mouth. It was to make the Jericho walls to fall down. And if you're going to do that, this word must not depart out of your mouth. It was to cross River Jordan, because River Jordan stayed between him and the land of promise. And if you're going to cross over every river of hindrance in your life, this word must not depart out of your mouth. It was in the midst of the children of Israel and some of those children of Israel there were times they gave advice to their leaders contrary to what the Almighty God wanted their leaders to do and this word must not depart out of your mouth there will be people that will pull up others will pull down but Joshua make sure that every time you are stable and this word will not depart out of your mouth and what a challenge the Lord is giving us that in every situation, in every circumstance, and in every predicament, and in every condition, that the word of God is what will bail us out, is what will take us off from all the problems we have, and whatever challenges are in our lives, that this word, the book of the law, shall not depart out of your mouth. Then it says... But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. I dare tell you that there are many people that are not meditating on the watch of God. If we're going to be successful in our lives, are we going to be successful by meditating on the watch of God? And when you meditate on the word, you remember the word. You remember the word. Uh, you know, if you will remember that, uh, you know, at the December 31st, as last year was passing away and the new year was coming, we all came together here and you are here. And as you are here, I told you that if we're going to be successful in this year, that the master key to success is the word holiness. You still remember? And I spelled it out for you. And do you know there are many people by January 1st, January 2nd, they were not meditating on that word because if we're meditating on the word we have heard, you will discover that we would have got a breakthrough because we are the master key. But people hear and they forget and they do not meditate on what they have heard. Even the one we heard just last week at the crusade, as the Lord himself was talking to us, Behold the Lamb 
that whatever problem you have or sin or was sickness or was satanic affliction behold the lamb and look and leave but you see people forget the way of escape that if you're going to escape like Lot and uh, the two daughters escaped out of the Sodom and Gomorrah look not behind thee and as the Lord is telling us this is the way that we are to look at the Lord and live if you meditate on the word of God will be farther out farther away from this position where we are now he tells us here you will meditate on that word day and night then it says that that means observe to do the reason we are meditating is to know how to do it love your enemies know how to do it forgive your offenders know how to do it love one another as i've loved you know how to do it and then make right your life. You bring your gift to the altar. And you remember that somebody has some, or some, something against you. Leave your gift there at the altar. Don't continue that offense. You go back to your neighbor and you make right your life. Meditate on that word and do that word. And then it says, if we do that and we act according to the word of God, it says, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous then thou shalt have good success good success and how many people are meditating on that word and the secret of our victory and the secret of the power of god in man is that you hear the word you read the word you meditate on that word turn it over in your mind think about it consider it ponder over it and it is that meditation in the word of god that will give you success and prosperity in your life in psalm 1 i'm reading from verse 1 psalm 1 reading from verse 1 Actually, let's read verse 2, then I'll jump back to verse 1. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law, do he meditate day and night. Profitable meditation on God's word. In his law, in the word of God, do he meditate day and night. I can assure you of this. If you are meditating on the word of God day and night, it will get you out of trouble. It will make you to live a righteous life. It will make you to be very close to the Lord because in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. And when you are meditating on that Word, you are meditating on Christ. And the power of the Word, the power of Christ will be relevant to your life, or will be present in your life. If you are meditating on this Word, you will not misbehave. You know how to act to your friends. How to act to your enemies How to relate with everybody You know the right thing to do At the right time To any person in any place Where you are meditating upon the word It says in his, But his delight is in the law of the Lord And in his law Does he meditate day and night Show me a backslider Why did he backslide? He was not meditating on the word of God Look at Lord's wife looking back. Why did she look back? She was not meditating on the what she just had. Look not behind you. And look at the people that go away from the Lord and they do some foolish things. They leave their wives and for a little period of enjoyment, they lose eternal life. They lose their spiritual life. They, they, they lose the respect of their children. Why? They were not meditating on the word of God. Show me a man that is taking bribe and eventually they caught him and say, ah, you say you are a Christian. Look at what you have done. And then he loses his job. Why? He was not meditating on the word of God. Show me a man that has been overwhelmed, overcome by sorrow. You know, it's not meditating on the Word of God. When you are meditating on the Word of God, it gets you out of that pit of despondency. And it brings your feet on the mountain top in the sunshine of His grace. His delight is in the law of the Lord. In this law, does He meditate day and night? Come back to verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. A man that is meditating on the word of God is not going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. 
A man, a woman that is meditating on the word of God is not going to stand in the way of sinners. No seated in the seat of this comfort is delight, is desire, is joy. And his celebration is in the law of the Lord and in his law. The sea meditate day and night, and it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit. In his season, his leave also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, tell me out loud, that's by meditating on the word of God, by meditating on the word of God, the prophet. That we have as Christians is based on our meditation on the word of God. If you are acting wrong, you are meditating on wrong things. If you are acting negative, you are meditating on negative things. If you are acting in a simple way, you are meditating on simple things. But when you are, if you want to act in a righteous way, and you want to act as a real child of God, and you want the beauty of holiness to shine forth in your life, come back to this word and meditate in the word of God day and night. Look at Psalm 4 verse 4. Stand in awe and see not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Commune with your own heart. Commune with your own heart. Be speaking to yourself and be reminding yourself of the word of God that you have heard. And that's what is going to give you the victory. That's what is going to give you the profit of meditating on the word of God. Psalm 77. Psalm 77, I'll read verse 12 first, then I'll go back to verse 11. Verse 12, I will meditate also on all thy work. I will meditate also on all thy work. I will meditate on all thy work. Can you look up for a moment? And you know why people are discouraged? You know why people are depressed? You know why people almost die before their time? They are meditating on the works of the enemy. They are meditating on the activities of Satan. They are meditating on witches and wizards. They are meditating on bad, bad stories they read anywhere. They are meditating on bad news. They are meditating on the wrong thing. But these psalmists said... There is enough for the work of God for us to meditate on. And if you are meditating on that work of God, it will lift up your faith. It will lift up your faith. We just uh, came from, you know, the crusade that finished last Sunday. You've had a lot. Why don't you meditate on them? The work of God. And you've seen other people say, look at what God did, look at what God did, look at what God did. Why don't you meditate on them? If you meditate on the work of God, you'll never be afraid of Satan. You'll not be afraid of witches and wizards. You'll not be afraid of anybody or any, any, any cause or any yoke. You'll not be afraid of the past or the present or the future. You'll not be afraid of anything, anyone, because it says, I will also meditate on all thy work and talk of thy doings. You see, what you are meditating on will determine whether you are going to be defeated or whether you are going to be victorious. Verse 11 now. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also on all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. That's what to meditate on. And then he tells us in Psalm 119. 1, 1, 9. Verse 97. Psalm 119, verse 97. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. I love your law. I love your word. I love the Bible. It is my meditation all the day. 
And then you take your Bible and the verses you have marched some time ago, you go over them again, you meditate on them. The words of Jesus, the promises of the Lord, the warning of the Lord, the encouragement of the Lord. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. When you are alone by yourself, meditation all the day. And when it appears you are hearing some negative, negative things, then you shut them away from your mind. It is the word of God is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies. Your enemies are taking this way. And then the, you meditate on the word of God. And the word of God makes you wiser than your enemies. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. You know, when you have a problem, everybody wants to be your teacher. Everybody wants to tell you this how to do it, this how to do it. But it says, I have understanding more than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. Thy testimonies are my meditations. I see many testimonies in the Bible. And that's what I meditate on. The testimony of Abimelech with Abraham. The testimonies are all, it's, that's my meditation. And the testimony of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And how he escaped from all the persecution and all the tyranny and the wickedness of Saul. That testimony of deliverance is my meditation. The testimony of Joshua. How they went around the Jericho walls and the Jericho walls came flat. And the God that did that for them is still the same. The testimonies are my meditation. I look at the ministry of Jesus Christ and the leper came and said, If you will, you can make me clean. I will be thou clean. The testimonies are all my meditation. And I look at the blind men coming to him. What do you want that I should do to that are I? May be open. Do you believe I can do it? Yes, Lord. Be it unto you according to your faith. The testimonies of my meditation. I see this woman that is coming at 12 years having the issue of blood. And she heard of Jesus. And she came in the press of the crowd. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And she touched the hem of his garment. And immediately she was made whole. The testimonies are my meditation. When you look at the testimonies, testimonies of the Bible. And testimonies of what we have heard that God is doing, and you are meditating on it. Uh -uh. God opening the eyes of the blind, and God making a man that had been insane for many years to be well, just like that through the name of Jesus, and God doing this and God doing that. Your testimonies, those testimonies are my meditations. It will get you out of your own problem. I say it will get you out of your problem. <laughs> I understand in verse 100, 100 now, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained, I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me how sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precept, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every evil way. You see, when you meditate on the word of God, you'll have hatred for evil. Hatred for unrighteousness. Hatred for uncleanness. Hatred for unfaithfulness to God, unfaithfulness to your family. When you meditate on the word of God, Psalm 143 verse 5 In Psalm 143 Verse 5 I remember the days of old I meditate on all thy works I muse, I think, I ponder On the work of thy hands You see that's what we are to do that you take the word of God. It's not enough that you just read it or that you have heard it or that you came to church and the preacher was, uh, was preaching and you were writing down notes. You get back home and then you meditate on the work of God, on the word of the Lord. In verse 10, teach me to do thy will. 
When you meditate on the word of God, then you are telling the Lord, O oh Lord, as a result of the word of God I'm hearing. I want to be able to do, because it's not the hearers that are justified, but the doers of the word. It says, teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good, lead me into the land of uprightness. In 1 Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. If we're going to benefit from the word or profit in the word, we must meditate on the word. Meditate on the word. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. In First Timothy chapter 4 verse 15, meditate upon these things. All that you have heard. The word of God, the word of salvation. The word of truth that purifies and cleanses and sanctifies us. The word that takes darkness or ignorance away from us and gives us light, enlightenment, understanding and wisdom. Meditate on these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Without meditation, your profiting will not appear to anybody. Nobody will know that you are actually even learning the word of God. Nobody will know that you belong to a church like this where we read the Bible through and through. Because it will not make the normal mark, the impression, it ought to make in your life. But it is meditating on the word of God that will make you to profit in the word and your profiting will appear unto all. Verse 16, take it unto thyself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Second Timothy chapter 2. In Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 7. Consider what I say. You've heard the word of God. Don't just write it in the notebook. Consider it. Ponder over it. Think about it. Apply it to yourself. Think it through. Meditate on it. Consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. You see, it is when you meditate on the word, then you are able to apply it to all the situations of your life, and then the Lord will give you understanding in all areas of your life. Meditation on the word of God, profitable, Meditation on God's word. I come to point number three. Precious and preventive medicine in God's word. Precious and preventive medicine in God's word. In Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, reading from verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Verse 22. For they are life unto those that find them. And health, that's medicine, health to all their flesh. It says, the word that you hear, my son, attend to my word. Incline your ear unto my says. And that word that you are hearing, don't let, don't ever let that word depart from your eyes. And you must make sure you keep the word in the midst of your heart. Why? Because if you do that, you'll find it is mercy to all your flesh. If you have cancer, the word will take the cancer away. Any problem, the word of God will take the problem away. Yeah. Why is it like that? Because faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. And when you hear the word of God, and you meditate on that word, and you apply that word to yourself, it will give you hope. You will know this situation in which you are is not hopeless. You have love. You will know that the word of God has solved all your problems. There's no reason to hate anybody or to hate yourself or to hate God. You love God, you love yourself, you love your fellow men. And this word will produce faith in you. 
You believe God. If God could do that and divide the Red Sea, He can solve my problem. If God can make all the chariots of earth to sink and to drown in the sea, He can drown all my problems. If God can make the Jericho walls to fall down by the shout of praise of the people of God, my shout of praise will make all the Jericho walls around me to fall down flat. The watch of God will develop faith in you. Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 17. In Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 17. The word is medicine to all your flesh. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Well, you say, but I'm hearing the word. And it looks like I don't have great faith. How many times have you had that word? And you hear that single message that will build up your faith. Hear it many times. And read it many times. And meditate on it many times. Faith coming by hearing and hearing. Faith coming by hearing and hearing. Faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so as we hear the word of God over and over, it will develop faith in us. And whatever the problems may be, whatever the challenge may be, they are gone already in Jesus' name. It tells us in uh, Matthew chapter 9 verse 22. Matthew chapter 9 verse 22. In Matthew 9 verse 22, Jesus turned about and when he saw her, said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. It is your faith. The power of the word of God in man. That makes you to know you are confident in the Lord. And you are trusting the Lord. And that faith makes you whole. And that faith comes by the hearing of the word of God. And because the faith is coming by the word of God, generating the faith in you. And making you to be able to stand up, affirming that God will solve the problem. That's how you are made whole. And the word of God that develops your faith becomes the medicine. The medicine, preventive medicine that will not allow more sicknesses to come. Precious medicine that will heal whatever might be there. And look at Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. That's medicine. That's your medicine right there. That he sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from their destructions that's why this word of god is so very important that the word of god in your life is what will grant you the faith the healing the health and also will prevent other diseases coming from your life coming to your life because you are confessing that word you are believing that word. You are accepting that word. And you know it is the word that makes you to be victorious in your life. And this word makes you more than a conqueror. He sent his word. And he healed them by that word that he sent unto them. And he delivered them from all their destruction. Now when we're talking about healing, it's not only the healing of the body. Of course, the healing of the body is there. But it's the healing of the soul. There's the healing of backsliding. There's the healing of the broken heart. And it is this word that's messy to the body. And it's messy to the soul. And it's messy to the broken heart. Look at Psalm 41. Psalm 41. I'm reading from verse 4. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul. You see that? Maybe somebody is saying, but I'm not sick. You mean you are not sick in the body. But it's a healing that the soul also needs. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. 
Then I told you there is a healing of backsliding. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 22. In Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 22. Mercy that we have in the word of God. Return ye backsliding children and I will heal your backslidings. I will heal your backslidings. And it's the word of God that is mercy to the backsliders. It's the word of God that is the mercy to the people who have gone astray. And you hear the word of God, you meditate on that word. What, what am I in sin? What did I leave the Lord? What did I go back from the Lord? And the word of God will draw you back. And it's that word of God that is a mercy to your backsliding. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Thou art the Lord our God. In Osea, in Osea chapter 14, Osea chapter 14, again he's still telling us, this is what the word of the Lord does. He heals backsliding. Osea chapter 14 verse 4. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For mine anger is turned away from him. He heals backsliding. He heals the broken heart as well. Let's look at Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. You see, every time people hear about healing, they think it's only the healing of a sick body. But it's a sick mind. And there's healing for the sick mind. There's a sick soul. And there's a healing for the sick soul. And there's a backslider. And there's healing for the backslider. And there's a broken heart. When your family is upside down. When you don't have any joy in your family. When what you expect from your children you are not getting. And when there's sorrow in your heart because of the family situation. And because of that family situation your heart is broken. And Jesus said the Heavenly Father has sent me to heal the broken hearted. That's why the word of God. Is mercy to every part of our lives, to the soul, to the spirit, to the mind, to the heart, and to the body as well. And then is this word of God that heals our spiritual lives and keeps us strong with vitality and spiritual energy. And then it is like you're almost floating in the air because you are victorious. You are not a victim to your temptations anymore. The word of God grants you total victory over all the temptations and all the trials of life. In Psalm 119 verse 9. Psalm 119 verse 9. It says, Wherewithal? Shall a young man cleanse his way by taking it thereto according to thy word? Wherewith shall a young man take heed unto his way? How will a young man live a victorious life? A young woman live a victorious life? How will a Christian, a young Christian, an older Christian, live a victorious life, a vibrant Christian life, a triumphant Christian life, by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Is the word of God that actually heals us in our spirit, in our soul, in our body. So well that we we'll live victoriously all the days of our lives. And this word is not only bringing healing to the backslider, it's also bringing sanctification to the believer. In John chapter 17 verse 17. John 17 verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God brings holiness, brings purity, brings sanctification. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Verse 19, and for their sakes I sanctify myself. 
that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, neither am I praying for these eleven who are with me alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. It's the word of God that makes us one. It's the word of God that takes the discord and the disagreement and the disunity, takes all that away from our lives, and then we're sanctified, we're purified, we're purged. And the holiness nature of the Lord comes within us and it makes us one, united, that they all may be one, as thou Father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them for day, that they may be one, as we are one, I in them, and thou in me. That they may be made perfect in one. All that is the ministry of the word of God. And is a mercy to our soul, to our spirit. That the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them. Even as thou hast loved me. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Reading from verse 26. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 That he might sanctify and cleanse it By the washing of water by the word That he might sanctify and cleanse it By the washing of water by the word After you have been saved When you are saved Your external sins are taken away Your outward sins are taken away It's like cutting off the branches of a tree The salvation and then the root of sin that is still there, that is hidden within the heart, the mighty hand of God or the mighty power of God comes and then uproots everything, sanctified by the cleansing of water by the word. Then in verse 27, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church. What makes a church to be glorious is the word of God. What makes a church to be glorious? The word of God. Nothing else, any other thing, all those other things may assist the word of God. But ultimately, ultimately, it is the word of God that gets the church saved, gets the church sanctified, gets the church empowered, gets the church on fire, gets the church to fall after the Lord Jesus Christ, gets the church to be a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle. Or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. In Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. What makes you strong? The Word of God. You see, after somebody had been sick, or when you are sick, you are weak. And then after that sickness, even after you are healed, now you need to gain strength. Healing is one thing. Strength is another thing. If you are healed by the word, then you will be strong by the word. It is the word of God that will make you strong and keep you strong. Strong in your spirit. And strong in your soul. And strong in your mind. And strong in your body. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. How do you overcome the principalities and powers that wrestle against your Christian life? By the word. When Satan came to Jesus and said this and that, Jesus said, It is reaching. It is this word that gets us healed, that keeps us strong, that keeps us overcoming. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. And you find it in the word of God. And you take it unto yourself. You appropriate it unto yourself. 
You hold it by yourself. You meditate on it yourself. You keep it with yourself. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day. And I'm done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. That's the word of God. If you are going to be strong by putting on the whole armor of God, you need that word. Therefore, your, your loins got about what truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. This word of grace, the word of omnipotence, and the word of salvation, and the word of his power, and the word of the eternal one, and the word of love, that gospel of peace, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith. And you know that comes by the word of God to you, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. What's the sword of the spirit? Which is the word of God. That's how to overcome. And we're going to overcome in Jesus' name. In Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. When the word of your testimony agrees with the word of the living God, you overcome. And if your word, the word of your testimony, is going to agree with the word of God, you must have read the word, you must have heard the word, and you must be meditating upon the word, you must be appropriating the word, you must be accepting the word, you must be standing on the word, you must be walking by the word of God, and you must stand at the center of that word of God, allowing nothing to take that word of God away from you. They overcame him, that is, they overcame the dragon by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives even unto their death. The Lord has spoken to us today on the power of the word. And we have seen, number one, the powerful ministry of the word. Number two, we have seen the profitable meditation on the word of God. Number three, we have seen the precious and the repentive medicine in the word of God. As we appropriate this word as you accept this word and you pray in the word, then you are going to find you'll be victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. We're not rushing out, we're going to pray and we're going to really talk to the Lord. We take the word He has given us, we take it back to the Lord. And as we take that word back to the Lord, great will be your success, Amen. great will be your strength, Amen. and great will be the divine supply in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Rise up now. We are going to talk to the Lord in prayer. We are seeing the word of God. The new converts, if you are going to grow, you need the word of God. You make up your mind. You are going to give a good portion of your time to reading the word of God. Obeying the word of God. Believing the word of God. Meditating on the word of God. Acting by the word of God. Living by the word of God. Doing everything by the word of God. And those of us who have been Christian for a long time, you have known the Lord for some time, a brother, a sister, you give the appropriate place to the word of God. Read that word over and over. Believe that word once again. Meditate upon that word once again. Act on that word once again. And stand upon that word once again. And do everything that you do according to that word once again. It is by making the word of God to be at the very center of your life. That's how you are going to have the victory. Victory over temptation. And victory over trial. Victory over the problems of life and victory in every area of your life. Victory in the church and victory in the family. Victory in your place of work. Victory in your spiritual life. 
by the word of God that you're here, by the word of God that you are standing upon, by the word of God you are meditating upon, the word of God. Let it give you strength. Let it minister to you power. Let it minister to you the real standing in, in life. Let it minister to you righteousness. Let it minister to you purity. The word of God. Let the ministry of the word of God be mighty and powerful in your life. Let it bring light into your darkness. Let it bring joy to the sorrowful. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The word of God. The word of God. Give it more time. Give it more place in your life. Read it. Meditate on it. Stand on it. Ponder over it. Consider it in your life. And it will give you the needed victory in your life. You'll be a triumphant Christian. A courageous Christian. You have the spirit of a conqueror by the word of God. Meditate on the promises. Meditate on the prophecies. Meditate on the commandments of precepts. Meditate on the warnings. Meditate on everything in the word of God. Meditate on the examples and the word of God. And the word of God will be mighty and powerful in your life. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Store your mind with the word of God. Fill your spirit with the word of God. Fill your brain with the word of God and stand on that word. And don't allow anything to shake you out of that word. Meditating upon the word of God, it will give you success. It will make you a profitable Christian, a powerful Christian, a mighty Christian, an unconquerable Christian. Let your delight be in the word of God. And in that word are you meditating day and night. In that word are you meditating day and night. I meditate on all the works of God. All the miracles of God. All those testimonies we are hearing. Meditate on them. Blind eyes opening. Meditate on them. The lame rising up and walking. Meditate on them. Cancer disappearing from cancer patients. Meditate on them. Meditate on the word of God and the works and the miracles of God. When you meditate on the word of God, the word of God will make you wiser than the ancients. Will make you wiser than those vain counselors. The word of God, it will put light, understanding, wisdom into your life. When you tell the Lord, O oh Lord, teach me to do thy will. Teach me to walk according to your way, according to your word, according to your will. Meditate on all these things. Give yourself holy unto them. If you will drink the water of the word, if you will store your mind and store your soul with the word of God, it will be medicine to your soul, medicine to your spirit, medicine to your body. This word of God, the word is sent to you so that the word will become a healing agent in your life. Heal your body, heal your broken heart, heal your soul, heal your family. Heal your relationships. The word will be a healing agent in your life. Give yourself to the word. Surrender your heart, your life to the word of God. And the word will be a strengthening agent in your life. A cleansing agent in your life. 
a healing agent in your life, a sanctifying agent in your life. This word sanctifies. This word purifies. And this word purges and cleanses. Let the word of God be a cleansing, purifying agent in your life. Put on the whole armor of God. That she may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore. The Lord is girt about with the belt of truth and take with you the word of God which is the sword of the spirit. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Take it along with you. It will grant you the victory. It will grant you the strength and the power. Meditate on the word. Meditate on the word. Meditate on the word. What you meditate on will determine whether you are going to have the victory or you are going to be a victim. If you meditate on the word of God, it's going to give you victory. It will energize and empower your life. Meditating on the word of God. For the word of God at the very center of your Christian life. Lay all malice aside, all guile aside, all hypocrisies aside, all envy aside, all evil speaking aside, and desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow. You will grow into maturity. You will grow in the strength and in the power of the Lord. Pray the word of God in. Pray the word of God in. Until the entrance of the word of God will bring strength and power, confidence, faith, trust, and authority into your life. Let the word of God make you better. Better spiritually, better in your family, better in all things. Accept the ministry of the world. Believe the ministry of the world. Accept it. Believe it. Commit yourself to it. You'll never be the same again. <laughs>